Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be discussing an interesting topic, best range speed. We will look at why we rarely fly at best range speed in a prop, but we are close to it in a jet. Next, we will look at the difference between thrust and power to help understand the topic better. And last but not least, we will look at the difference between maximum range cruise speed, MRC, or long range cruise speed LRC and what does the cost index have to do with them. Before we get started though, can you consider helping the channel grow by subscribing and giving a video a like if you have found it helpful. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Your best range or maximum range condition is a term you've probably heard of before, but in a propeller driven airplane, it is a setting you will probably never use. In fact, many piston aircraft don't publish a best range speed. That's because best range in a prop is often impractical to fly at, but in a jet, it's a more useful than you'd imagine. Even if you took two identical airframes and outfitted one with a jet and the other with a prop, their best range performance would be very different, and it all comes down to the difference between power and thrust. Jet engines create thrust, and propeller spinning engines, reciprocating or turboprop, create power that changes best range performance dramatically. So now let's look at the difference between thrust and power. Thrust and power are not the same. Thrust is a pure force, and that's what a jet engine produces, a force that pushes the jet or the aircraft forward. So those levers in that turbine cockpit aren't throttle levers or power levers, they are thrust levers. But reciprocating engines and turboprops do not directly create thrust. Instead, they spin a shaft, the more the fuel they burn, the faster the shaft spins, and so on. So they are applying a force at a velocity. And as we all know, force times the velocity equals power. The faster they spin the shaft, the more velocity it has, the more power they generate. Of course, the shaft connects to a propeller, and the propeller creates thrust. But the rate of burn, or fuel burn to be exact, is directly related to how fast the shaft spins. Turboprop engines do actually create some thrust. Some of the exhaust gases passing out of the turbine create thrust, but it's a small amount of thrust compared to the power generated by the turbine. And that's why turboprops are considered to be power generating engines. Now let's look at how range is affected by thrust and power. Best or maximum range occurs where the proportion between the aircraft's velocity and the engine's output is the greatest. Essentially, you are getting the most velocity per unit of fuel burned. Since jets produce thrust, you use the thrust required curve to find their best range. And since propeller driven engines create power, you use the power required curve to find the best range condition. Let's start with the jets first. This is a typical thrust required curve. It's made by adding the induced and parasite drag curves that becomes total drag curve as highlighted with the blue one. The total drag equals the thrust required for level flight. Finding the greatest proportion between velocity and engine output is actually very simple on a graph. Draw a straight line from the origin of the graph tangent to the engine output curve. On a thrust required curve, that tangent point occurs a little faster than the lowest thrust required point. So your best range speed with the thrust producing engine is faster than your minimum drag speed. The minimum drag speed is called left to drag max or maximum endurance. It's where the induced drag equals parasite drag. In fact, with the thrust producing engine, this best range tangent point occurs where the induced drag max makes up about 25% of total drag and parasite drag makes about 75%. Propeller driven aircraft use the power required curve, which is easy to calculate. Simply multiply the total drag by the velocity at each point along the curve. That becomes a power required curve. LD max is no longer at the lowest point uh, of the curve, it moves up. The left to drag max speed does not change as you transform a thrust required curve to a power required curve. The curve simply shifts around it. And if you draw a line from the origin tangent to the power required curve, you will see that it reaches the curve right at LD max, as shown in front of you. In a propeller driven airplane, best range happens at the point where induced drag equals parasite drag. You can quickly see that the best range speed for a prop happens at a much slower point 
on the drag curve than it does for a jet. In a propeller-driven aircraft, LDMAX is often associated with VY, or best rate of climb airspeed. But in a jet, you would often fly close to your best range speed. In fact, the long-range cruise LRC thrust setting for a jet usually provides 99% of the maximum, or best range speed, MRC. At LRC, you trade 1% of range for 3-5% to faster airspeed. All right? But when a jet fuel prices go up, airlines often fly at economy cruise settings instead of LRC. These settings are called cost index. They balance the cost of fuel against the other hourly costs of operating the aircraft. The cost index right there is a completely different and huge topic by itself, and I'm probably going to make another video explaining all about it um, in, the, um, in the foreseeable future. These indexes use a thrust setting between maximum long maximum MRC and LRC cruise settings. Of course, ATC requirements and departure delays can change a jet's uh, inward cruise speed, but their planned speed usually falls between LRC and max. And whatever the speed is between is that speed that results from the cost index. It helps to add that the lower the cost index, the number of the cost index, the closer we fly to the maximum range or MRC. The higher the cost index, the closer we fly towards LRC. And any number in between results from the cost index results in a speed that is between MRC and LRC. And this is it guys, propeller driven engines create power and jet engines create thrust. And because of that fact, a jet usually cruises very close to its maximum range speed while propeller driven aircraft rarely gets close to it. If you have any questions regarding the topic, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to answer you guys. Thanks for clicking and see you in another video.